afternoon and a very warm welcome to Riverside Park. This week Borders Rugby TV brings you the second Border Derby of the season between Jed Forrest and Hoyk. With both teams still looking for their first win of the season and a few familiar faces returning to the Jed Forrest squad, we're sure to be in for a great afternoon of rugby. Now let's hand over to Callum Patterson and Stuart McFarlane in the commentary box. It's a long history of success that Hoyk have won in this fixture and it's something we talked about beforehand and I think just before coming on air Stuart you were kind of racking your brains about kind of the last time that Jed could have managed to get one up on, uh, on Hoyt because you know down the last decade or so it's been pretty dominant obviously they've not been in the same division every year as well. Yeah, of course they have the most boxing days they have the, the Skelly Cup competition I think that was the, the last time they picked up uh, a, a victory over their, their near neighbours in uh, in the form of Hoyk they, they tend to have the, the upper hand in the, the sevens game but in the fifteens game the, the general stability of Hoyk playing uh, more or less in the top flight with uh, one uh, notable exception is uh, really the, the reason why they've perhaps been that little bit stronger. It's interesting, Jed obviously, we've talked about in previous weeks on the programmes about uh, the Jed colour being a, a slightly darker blue as the match is now underway. Yeah, Hoyt got us going and Brunton getting the game underway. Jed with it throw in the ruck inside between the 10 and 22 there. Jed are heading towards the car park end. It's first half, it's high it goes from the scrum half of McGough and New Zealand, it went high, not particularly far, and a bit of a knock on in there, and Hoyk have turned over on the 10 metre on the main stand side, and you know, the wind is going to be interesting because it's a warm day, we've talked about the dry pitch, but the wind certainly swirled that ball up a little bit there. At the back, waiting, Carrier's there, as is uh, scrum half, Patterson, if he wants to go out, Carrier just lurking at the back, They're around 5 metres short here. Of this try line, it's out the side though, Carrier does get there, he's inching a little bit forward. Patterson playing it across, bulldozing through, he's going to get over the line. Yes to do, Hoyk get over, first score on the board. And it's taken them eight and a half minutes. And the set piece worked really well, very patient with the forwards. And it's finished off with the backs. Yeah, a very well executed try there. Manny Carrier this time, the ball eventually worked its way back. It was Dalton Redpath that got the clean hands in the ball in the line out. The ball worked its way back towards Carrier. He had some work to do as he was uh, burrowing his way up towards the, the five metre line. But there's a, a lot of strength in those Hoyt centres. And Andrew Mitchell, 65 appearances for Mitchell, six foot two, and a fine start from Hoyt. There's a short. With three players in the line out and taking it that front and good little play from the scrum half. Liam McGough to find a bit of support now on that near touch line on that left side. Trying to bury it out. McGough again finds support of the forwards who are bundling out over that 22 line. Now it comes again and trying to keep hold of it. Was uh, Buckley in the thick of it once more, taking through bodies there centrally is Marshall. We find it back out to far side, and it's a big hit that's flashed in there. And Hoyt may well try to reclaim the ball on the small stand side near the touchline. It's still with Jed though, and still trying to keep hold of his wardrobe. Goff manages to wheel it back out. Skeldon took a bit of a hit, and again another big challenge coming in, crunching chat tackle there. Still with Jed though. As we wheel through the phases now, it's first bit of sustained possession we've seen from the home side. Good play from Buckley there, flings it out to Marshall on the right. Now he could well be held up here with two white bodies, but if he says no, and it still remains with the home side. Taken in by Skelder once again, captain's armband this season. Been around this team for a long time. Flung it out to his left with Young taking another big hit. Not going too far forwards now, they'll maybe try going out to the left channel. Again, just pushed back in there. Kind of scrappily lost the ball here, potentially. It certainly might have just about held on. It's, it's maybe Skeldon down on the floor has managed to keep hold of it, and Buckley manages to get his boot back just inside his own half. Gets a long boot, and that's going to bounce just on the right side of the line. In fact, I think it went out just before then as the assistant decides to pull it back in between the 22 and the 5 metre line. And a few quick instructions for Finlay Scott. Yeah, really 
segmented part of that front three, but that's been lost and went straight to the back of the line out and now flying forward. And they could go all the way here for Hoyk. This could be sensational. There's two or three jerseys back in Jack Colors trying to get there was Lewis Young and they've got inside the 22, but they have been stopped now. Hoyk as they went from one end to the other, picked up by Carrier and across to Linton. Linton stopped on the 22, but from Jed Pressure, it's now up the other side. Hoyt keep hold. Muir trying to battle forward and the wayside just trying to get a bit of breath and work out their next attack as Jed have slowed this down as an injury. Jed player down on the main stand side, but we carry on and picked up by Brunton. Little kick through there. Will it find the Hoyt player? Not quite of Lewis Ferguson. I think the penalty was always coming anyway, so they managed to have a little bit of a free play there and it's been brought back. So penalty from the 22, slotted over. And Hoyk extend their lead to 10. Absolutely. And it's uh, taken a bit of a way to get out there, but Linton does get through and a breakaway here for Hoyk. And what a run this is here from the number eight. It's going all the way over halfway, almost taken to the 22. He's been pushed out, chucked the ball away, and it's been given away back to Jed with Lewis Young, who's uh, under all sorts of pressure. Penalty will come for Jed. And again, Hoyk almost profiting on the turnover possession, some run in there from the set piece from the number eight and well he just kind of never had the support when it was classic he made the break, everyone a bit surprised, number eight making a good run there but there was no support and he kind of had to either take the touch or throw it away and he threw it away. Fed across now heading towards the far side and Marshall and, and again Lewis Young couldn't get there now, Hoyt could get themselves forward and what a run this could be from Ferguson trying to dance his way he's been chased all the way through by Rory Marshall and is caught like a mousetrap heading towards the 22 and the main stand site still here with Hoyk is passed out to Brunton and support wide and McCain who scored two last week is inching closer towards the five metre line it's scrappy down there it's just about kept alive here but again great play there from Hoyk and just not quite the pace to finish the job well recovered defensively by Jed Taken at the back by Atkinson and good play this from Jed as now Blake Roth gets a good bit of running and now the home fans get to cheer all up towards the halfway line was Gregor Young and taken down by a couple of players in green fed through the hard wardrobe and now Buckley trying to get through the gap on the 10 metre line now an attacking position at the central area of the pitch flicked across a good bit of pace shown by the hooker Scott before taken down and just been slowed down here defensively and been turned over in fact by Hoig at the back there and it was slow coming and not coming quick enough for Jed and Hoig managed to steal the ball and all fair and square says the referee is Patterson now for Carrier and now up to almost the 10 metre line in the attacking position for Hoig in the Jed half and now it's their turn to Go for the boot and Patterson with a kick which is again I think just timed absolutely to perfection on this side of the corner flag. Throwing now in between the 22 and the 5 for Hoy taken at the back well by Sutherland. And getting a good bit of momentum on them all here as they head towards the 5 metre line. And good momentum this is. And now McGough fires it out and McKean and one or two others maybe looking for it wide, it is going to come now wide and to Donaldson McKean to his left, Donaldson tries to go himself, taken by two Jed players on the five metre line and coming out rather slowly here and it's going to be held in there and going to be turned over I think for Jed by the looks of things and just got into a very tight space, ball not coming out Yep, goes to the front and going to be just waiting for maybe one of the, the big guns at the back or is it going to come out here for Hoik? Just shadowing and making sure Mike does play it out, does try to dive over himself and does so superbly. Ducked in and over the line and Hoik have scored another as for 10 minutes before half time. Yeah, wonderful try there from the scrum half. Just a, a wonderful little sidestep. That, that's what they do, just closing the door. And over he goes for a try. That's a second try for Hoik. And I mean, that's uh, 
or no less than, than Hoyt deserve because they've had a few visits in and around that 22 and I think at the very least they would feel uh, aggrieved if uh, they spent another 5-10 minutes knocking on that door without any further points on the board so Bailey Donaldson gonna get the ball down in towards the 22 and Hoyt will have the last chance Last big play of this first half, looking to maybe add to the tally. 15 points up, a couple of tries, and one person a penalty in there too. Yeah, 15 points to nil. It's uh, not been a, a spectacular first 40 minutes uh, from a Hoyt's point of view, but it's been workmanlike and productive. And they've certainly, as the, the half has worn on, they've looked uh, more clinical. They've, they've had the sharper edges about them, that's for sure. Good take at the back of the line by Sutherland, and now. Mike rattling through the phases here towards the main stand side and here towards Donaldson. Support wide, but taken before McKean could maybe get hold and have Jed smuggled this back. Might well dab, but only briefly here. Bit messy once more, but Hoyk have somehow reclaimed this. Just outside the 22 in the main stand side. Taken in by Linton. Getting a good bit of help there from one or two of his forwards. Redpath helping out. Fed out there by Patterson to his right, just more central position now, just over the 22 metre line, looking for one try, one more try before the half time whistle. Brunton looking for a bit of help, and now forward here is Muir, the prop, getting a long way and found support, and over and under the post they go, and I think that's a second for the scrum half. Patterson, what a first half he's had, and Hoyk have now really adding a bit of dominance to the scoreboard at the end of this first period. Yeah, and what was important there, and you mentioned it, was the, the work in particular of Sean Muir, because about a minute earlier they worked all the way along the edge of the 22, but didn't really gain an awful lot of ground. It was a couple of steps forward, but the pass on to the, the teammate was de devouring most of the ground that had been made, whereas there Sean Muir at loose head was able to power his way through, made a good 10, 12 metres before the offload to Towards the scrum half, in underneath the post, and that was the sharpness, that was the clinical edge as uh, we've reached half time. Yeah, Phil back Donaldson converting, so 22 points to nil at the break. <laughs> next try, next score is going to be pretty crucial, you suspect to it. See Jed get back into this game. Yeah, you feel if Hoyt get a, another score on the board, or even you know two penalties, goals, or something along those lines, of either five or six points, then it's uh, going to be almost uh, curtains for Jed. But uh, Rory Marshall on the break just now, up towards the 22. Yep, good running here as they recycled through two or three passes really well on the small stand side. Skeldon comes in here now in between the 22 and the five meter line. Back with uh, wardrobe now and support in Paxton, the prop. Jade looking to start on this end seat in the second half. A couple more coming in the big guns. Again, Roth just there as a shield for McGough to feed through, and it's a bit of a loose pass as try to find Buckley. Now a kick and chase here for Hoyk over halfway line. And uh, they've somehow managed to get hold of the ball. Jed trying to get back in the figure. I think McKean was one of those. Now Brunton trying to get through a gap. Now up to the other end here towards the 22 at the other side. And Hoyk once again being very profitable when the balls came loose to Green. Heck of a lot of metres. Taking in now Red Path just outside the 22 into the main stand side. Brunton feeds in towards Donaldson. Haven't went too many metres forward now, but sticking with the possession. Patterson with a couple of tries, just lets the ball dance through underneath his legs and put himself under pressure. Big challenge coming in from Shearer Gibb. But still with the side in green who are in front here. And taken on now by McLeod and support from his hooker teammate and carrier, the captain. Still dancing around the 22. Now central there, trying to blast through Linton here through a gap. Love a little pop pass from Muir. Taken down, Patterson when they go with Brunton, maybe go to the boards, the left side. And now right on the wing, waiting for it was McKean, looking to add to his scoring tally this season. He's taken in, was a forward pass. but the pass was forward in the end as he got up to the five metre line. That'll end that move. Ken McGough finding support now, a big bit of running by Roth, but straight into a couple of green jerseys and taken down rather swiftly. Now Buckley, 
flings it wide to the other side, on the right side now, and looking to get the challenge in the tackle in McLeod for Hoy, stopping any threat of getting too much further. Not getting too many metres here, but they're keeping hold of it, which is the main thing now. Skelding inside, he's got a nice little pass through up towards the halfway line and taken up now by Lewis Young who's going to try and wriggle through two or three in green up well towards almost the 22 metre line now away from McGough and a bit of a slack pass but recovered by Gary Young now rolling his way forward towards the 22 on the stand side main stand side now now a big challenge in Roth, absolutely hammered to the floor, was it dangerous? It was, it's a penalty. Taken very quickly here by Jed in, coming for the support was one of the forwards. Thinking also in there too was Buckley, trying to keep it in his grasp. Now Ferreira coming around, forwards up towards about five metres out here. A little dummy back from the scrum half is not quite what, but Young gets it back, Gary Young that is. Right almost in front of the post here for Jed. Inching towards the line here, looking for that score. Fours again, Paxton with it. Six, seven metres out, going further and further right here. Hoik have stolen it, but not legally. Buckley has the ball in hand at the moment. That was three excellent phases of play there involving Gary Young, who was the, the most offensive Jed Forrest player there, very direct in his running. A lot of the, the, the passage of play you mentioned in commentary did not really going very far, but uh, uh, Gary Young certainly changed all that. Now, quickly taking in the penalty from short range. Roth was in the middle of that. Now it's wheeled round the side. Can they get this over the line? They are a metre or two short here. Scaled in the mix, can he feed it through and Pop's got it, I think is it Ferreira that's got the one over the line in the I, end. I think Ferreira is the man who's yep. uh, going to touch down and claim the score. Done really well there, Scaled was influential in that match to wheel himself around, find the prop and finished really well and Jed are on the board a positive start to the second half. Clark Skeldon was instrumental in producing the opportunity for Paolo Ferreira to crash over so Jed will be pleased to see him on at the start of the, the second half. He's usually very effective for a good 40-50 minutes and that's a, an excellent conversion so Jed exactly what the doctor ordered. Second try here for Jed in quick succession at the start of the second half. He'd certainly put the cat amongst the pigeons and now a couple of three phases to the other side, flung across here for Marshall, looking to try and back himself, trying to get through two or three high bodies. Pushed up towards almost the 22, now on the main stand side. Trying to add a bit of help as one or two others in blue, but the penalty will come in the end. And what a turnaround this second half so far from Jed. So Scott with the throw and it goes to near the back of the line out, taken down by the scrum half. Oh, but the slip and the ball through the fingers of Paxton. And the chance to run it through the line there will not happen. And turnover scrum for Hoik. Hoik have in possession. Looking maybe for one more try just to take it further away from Jed again. Looking to burrow it out to the other side as Ferguson finds a great pass there. And wonderful run. This could be from the wing of McKean. Inside he goes. Linton trying to find the support. Big number eight. Now everyone swarming back defensively, well into attacking position. Fung to Little, oh, the God. replacement, and oh, did it go forward there? Taken at the back and down quickly for McGough. Buckley swinging it out right, further across Greg Young, finding the support. Lewis Young coming in, his elder. And that back line now for Jed, looking for a second try to really make it a tight finale after a fairly distant first half where we very, very good at finishing their tries Ferreira who scored now picking up here on the 10 metre line coming towards the main stand side supporting Law who is now on I thought he was going to come on earlier but is now on for Jed and the forward pack starting to be changed around a little bit here for both sides freshening things up that's a ball that's bounced off Buckley, not expecting that at all, and came off and went forward. 
And that was a bit of a, a bit of a messy one, a silly one to turn over possession. Carrier with a throw in just inside the 22 on the main stand side. Taken down well and Patterson across for Brunton. Switch there, Gordon Woolley. It's a bit loose though, the ball is on the floor, bouncing around. Picked back up by Linton. Hoyka went back to the 10 metre line. In the Jed half, out to the left side. The pitch next to the smaller stand here at Riverside. Now comes back in Linton, picking up from the scrum half. It's a metre or so forward. Through a couple of phases and now the kick down towards the corner flag on this main stand side and he's judged that superbly there. Jed with the throw in, taking the kick to touch just inside the hoy calf, taken very high by Roth there. Cushioned down by the substitute 10 and Bambrick now on towards the stand side, good play into Shira Gibb. Shira Gibb taken down though, a couple in green, picked back up by Lewis Young into contact goes Gary Young. Trying to work round the little gap. Lu Shung in there once more. Heading to creeping towards the 22. Jed could do with a score now for the grandstand finish. But they've lost the ball and it's a box kick up. On the scrum half and back in the Jed half. They're having to go from deep again. Gregor Young flattened out in there. And there's going to be a yellow card shown. And Callum Rennick is off to the bin and Hoyk will finish the game with 14 that was a, it was a late challenge it was a late challenge it was a, f a full blooded border derby late challenge coming in there on Young as they, he was looking to address what was in front of them then he was cleaned out there and uh, I, I don't think there'll be any necessarily any sympathy shown there to, to Callum Rennie but equally I think he's happy to take his medicine on this occasion to, to watch on from the, the touchline knowing his side are leading by 22 points to 7 Jed have it with Hoyt clearing that will be the last play a bit of pride here Gregor Young, lovely ball in for Lewis Young on the main stand side. A few metres in from the touchline. Two and a half minutes into overtime. Roth tried to get through one, nearly got through two. Chucks the ball away though, has to be juggled back by Eldon. It's been cleared all the way back to the Jed half. Scott making a good bit of headway and finding support. Ferreira. Scaled in over the 10 metre line. Heading up almost to the 22, rolling a good few metres extra there. Now trying to play down the left channel. Lovely play for Gregor Young and now Shira Gibb, two to his left, but trying to take the challenge himself and they'll recycle here. Marshall now with a little spin and a tumble. To the right was Young, Gary Young this time. Advantage coming here for Jed. Gregor Young now trying to wheel round. Tackle from Linton. And they go back to the left. It's been left here for Shira Gibb. Inside for Roth. And the ball goes out of play. I think they're going to come back for the penalty though. And still playing in to almost four minutes of overtime. Yeah. Robbie Shira Gibb there on the break, took the ball into contact, he was almost uh, trying to draw in the man and be able to offload in one in the same move but he had the, the ball too close to his chest and the, he had two players to his left hand side, I, th I think if he'd perhaps measured the pass at a fraction earlier it may well have, have come off for Jed Forrest there but uh, he'd be mindful he didn't want the interception. Penalty taken in towards Skeldon, five metres or so away now, just slightly more than that Forward, trying to drive it forward. At the back, as Elder goes to the left again, and Buckley trying to read through the gap. Good strength, about a metre or two shots popped up for Gregor Young. He's swallowed up in the challenges. So short here, Jed, for a second try. I thought Buckley was there. I really did. Again, trying to peel around the right side. And now maybe they're going to get over. And they do have the second try. It may well be too little too late to salvage the game, but a bit of pride. But sure is wheeled over in the end. One of the I think forwards. could be Clark Yeah, Skeldon. I think it's Skeldon. It's got it. Well, if they're going to 
not win the Scaly Cup, but at least a Scaly can get on the scoreboard. Yeah, Clark Skeldon then just flings the ball to one side there, hands above his head there, a real effort from him. Jed Forrest having won the second half then by what, 12 points to nil because all Hoyt's uh, scores were coming in that first half. The referee blows for full time and uh, Jed will they'll head into the dressing room, not necessarily licking their wounds, but uh, they'll have a better idea of where they are collectively now. So will Hoyt, uh, a very productive first half, not certainly as, as productive in terms of the, the scoreboard, but they were able to weather a Jed Forrest uh, response in the early stages of the second half when uh, Jed got the first point courtesy of that uh, converted try five, six minutes into the second period and then Hoyt were able to slow up the game, get the game back into a, a flowing style that uh, they were happier with as they, they were in control of the, the contest. Skeldon's try coming right at the very end of the half is, is nothing really more than consolation but uh, Jed were far from whipping boys this afternoon at home it's never pleasant from, for a home support to see a border club from nearby come and uh, take away the spoils particularly if there's, there's some silverware to collect as well but Hoyt just did too much and uh, I think uh, they're just that little bit further down the, the road in terms of their, their overall development but uh, from Jed it's uh, a better response after shipping eight tries at Mileni Park a week ago Jed 12 Hoyt 22 the final score and you look at some of the recent score lines of 20 plus points between the sides a bit closer and it's certainly the second half performance from Jed was uh, something to take hold for the games ahead Matty Carrier comes up and collects the, the Skelly Cup which is normally handed out on Boxing Day but uh, it's a, a trophy presented at the start of September and Matty with a broad smile on his face taking the silverware back to Mansfield Park So it's been an exciting old game but Hoik the victors by 22 points to 12 Well I think we were obviously disappointed with the first half we just didn't really turn up um, second half we could probably take as a win, um, probably left a few tries still on the, on the field there, but um, I, I, well, I never played last week, but I would say a better performance, and at least we were, we were in the game this week, so plenty to take out of it. Particularly that second half, you look at the, the start of the second period, and you, you score a try, and it was a, an illustration of what this group of players can do. Mm. Is it a matter of getting that little bit fitter, sharper, more familiar with one another, particularly in the, in the forwards? Oh yeah, definitely. I would say definitely say more familiar with each other and just kind of well get get better at structure because we kind of failed in it a few times with a few loose passes and uh, missing missing the, the wrong the wrong man out. Like, but like the, there's things to build on. So so I, I, we're we're happier with the second half performance, but obviously just a slow start. And now you're getting to see where the opposition sides are as well. You're not a million miles away from really putting one or two sides in this division to the sword, so that must give you some confidence and some belief that very quickly you can turn this round. Yeah, I would, I would say we would de definitely take confidence. Um, last season we, we just weren't at the races, um, so hopefully we can we can do, do better than that. Um, but like you say, we, we've got to see what Curry's like, got to see what Hoyke are like, and I would say that they're two definitely top four sides anyway, so uh, yeah, we'll just move on to next week and, and see what Selkirk brings. With that in mind, just as a final question, how do you set out your season and plans of what, what you hope to achieve, your aspirations? Is it very much a, a transition time for the club and just keeping the, the club and the this group of players as one for the moment and stability? Yeah, I think it's just building character again. Um, especially what, what Mark Lee said through the week there and, and just kind of building for, for the future. And obviously we, we want to get the results and, and we want the, this team to, to, to do that as well. But, but we, we need to look to the future as well. Uh, and, and hopefully, it, like the young guys will come through, obviously myself and Lewis are getting older now. Like, But hey, it's just building character and, and trying to move forward. And just with the, the last two years in mind as well, people's own... I, I suppose that their own commitments change. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our commitments change, and, yeah. and what we do, I think, is just a, a natural evolvement in, mm -hmm. in life, and that. So it is, as, as you say, it's about ensuring that there is a, a club and a, a club at a certain level for players to come into in the future. Yeah, definitely, and, and there's a good buzz about the club, and, and that's what we want. We want to happen, and, and we want to enjoy it off the field as well. Uh, but like I say, it's it, to, 
to do that, you've got to get the results as well. And, and we need to just make sure we're building on that and hopefully we get a few wins this season. It's going to be hard, um, but definitely for, for us as a, as a Premiership club, we need to stay in the Premiership. So, yeah, we need to build on that. We wanted a bit of a reaction. I think after last week we were disappointed with we starting against uh, Selkirk and finishing with a draw. But uh, to come down the Riverside, it's never easy coming down here, no matter what the team looks like, they're always a, a good stuffy side, Jed, so yeah, it was, it's definitely too good to pick up the, the four points at the end. What's interesting as well is to look at a, a Hoyk side now, minus a, a few real characters that have retired and moved on, but to see the likes of yourself, Sean Muir, the, the, the Grahams of this world come through and become leaders and become decision makers on the park and really, you know, perhaps take on the mantle of, of others because that's going to be important as the season goes on when, when you get down to the nitty gritty in games. I um, we've got a, an extremely young team. I think uh, average average age is like 22, 23. So, um, like like to me, Sean Biscuit, uh, all the boys have had to step up and come as a bit of leaders for all these young boys that are no longer out with under 18 setup. But uh, it makes it quite easy when under 18s are coming out with the talent that we've got, like so like of Connor Sutherland and Hector Patterson and stuff. It, it makes it a lot easier. But they're, they're familiar with one another and they're, they're bedding in nicely to a group of players that you've been part of for a little while now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they've, they've slotted in no bother. Um, we've got quite a good squad down at Hoyk, so and everybody's moving about positions, learning different bits, and it all comes together quite nicely. Skelly Cups and Border Leagues are perhaps a bonus. Talking to Sean Muir just a short time ago, the top four is, is an essential goal for you this season. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, definitely. Um, top four is probably... A, a target for us last year as well. I would say we we want a home semi final, but we'll take uh, top four in the, the least. Like so, definitely. A couple of difficult matches coming up, but at least you go into them unbeaten with a, a draw and a, a win over border rivals. So, all in all, in pretty good shape. Yeah, we could ask for a well, <laughs> could have done with a home win last week, but we'll take a draw and a win to start the season. So, we'll hopefully kick on now and uh, look to push on. So a great win for Hoyk this afternoon, not only do they get their first win of the Premiership but they get to take home the Skelly Cup and it's a win for them in the Pool A of the Border League. Next week we're off to see Selkirk against Jed Forrest at Philip Hoch. I hope you can join us there but for now, cheerio. <laughs>